who that to the who that nation welcome to the dome patrol podcast your podcast for the new orleans saints here on the kb radio network i am your host kevin reed and we are at week three and the new orleans saints currently sit at two and zero after defeating the tennessee titans in week one and just this past monday night knocking off the carolina panthers now the saints travel to lambeau field it isn't the full frozen tundra yet but we will take on the green bay packers this sunday 12 noon can't wait let's see if we can extend this to three and oh we shall see but before we preview this upcoming matchup against the packers we have a uh, a lot of news that dropped over the week. Well, not a lot. Really just one big thing that's kind of disturbing. But it, it is monumental in, <laughs> in our defense, which is currently ranked fifth overall in the National Football League. Saints safety Marcus May suspended three games for violating the NFL policy on substance abuse. Yes, yes, Marcus May. Marcus May has dodged a lot of bullets <laughs> since he became a New Orleans Saints. Let's remember when they first uh, acquired Marcus May from New York, uh, he was in trouble for a drunk driving incident or something like that. I, for I forgot exactly what it was, but he beat that. Then it was an incident that took place here in New Orleans that involves uh, another vehicle incident. I, I forgot uh, all the details with that. I think it was some schoolgirls he cut off or something. Or they cut him off. and I, I forgot how it all went. But that was kind of brushed under the carpet as well. Well, this go around, the, the hammer finally fell. Uh, <laughs> the NFL announced a three-game suspension of New Orleans Saints safety Marcus May for violating the Leeds policy on substance abuse on Wednesday. Marcus May, who played a team-high 123 defensive snaps for the Saints over the past two weeks, will miss games against the Green Bay Packers this Sunday, next week game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the following week against the New England Patriots. He will return uh, and be eligible to play in week six, against the Houston Texans. Over two games, Marcus May produced 13 tackles, one interception, and one sack for the Saints defense, which is ranked fifth, as I said before, in points allowed this uh, uh, this short season thus far. Uh, the New Orleans Saints signed Marcus May in 2022. Uh, Marcus May played 10 games for the Saints last season. He is the starter with Tyron Matthew at safety. The Saints could use rookie Jordan Howden, who played 26 snaps over the last two weeks, uh, as a replacement for Marcus May at safety. The Saints took uh, Howden in the fifth round in just this past year's draft. May will join fellow New Orleans Saint Alvin Kamara, who uh, is entering his last week on the suspension list and rookie quarterback Jake Hader, who was suspended, uh, I think the first six games of this season, uh, to the suspension list. So there's that, uh, Marcus may will not be with the team for the next three weeks. And that is a big blow in my humble opinion, because Marcus may was, uh, doing real good, uh, this season. I know it's a sample size, only two games, but, he was looking good back there. The whole defense as a whole was looking good. And I'm, I'm hoping that the rookie can come in and, you know, we won't miss a beat there. But uh, Marcus, May, <laughs> Marcus May had experience. Uh, this will be the rookie's first start. He's played some downs, but this will be his first start if that's the route that Dennis Allen decides to go with. But I still have confidence in this defense that they can uh, get the job done without Marcus May. But uh, it really does stink. 
that uh, the Saints, I don't think we ever been in a position like this. They have three players suspended at the same time. That is that is weird. If I'm not mistaken, I should have looked it up, but I think this is the first time this didn't happen. I, I, I don't recall having players, uh, let alone three players, suspended at the same time for the Saints. But it is what it is. This is where we're at with it. Uh, that's the only noteworthy news that took place over the week. So we'll see if it's a uh, impact on the team. Uh, I'm hoping it's not, but you know, in any, in any facet of sports, I don't care if it's football, basketball, hockey, whatever. If one cog is lost out of the wheel, Things can fall apart. So I, I'm praying that we can still keep it together. You know, you may look at Marcus May and you're like, ah, he's not that important. But he really is. He really is. Uh, I read off his stats, you know, 13 tackles, one intercept, one sack. That is crucial. That is good. <laughs> That's some decent stats for two weeks of play. So uh, that's a lot of production over a three-week period that we're going to miss. But – it is what it is. Can't cry over spilled milk. That's where we're at with it. Uh, moving on, uh, the Saints, as we said, this, coming off of a short week, just this past Monday night, they defeated the Carolina Panthers by the score of twenty to seventeen. It, this is a, this is another big game. And every game, and I'm gonna sound like a broken record throughout the season because every game is gonna be a big game. For the simple fact in the division that we thought was a weak division, uh, at least so far is not, <laughs> you know, saints are two and oh, but so are the Atlanta Falcons as well as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The only team who hasn't won a game is get is the team that we just beat is the Carolina Panthers who are Oh, and two, but uh, we have to continue to press forward as if every game is a playoff game because every game is crucial. Every game is crucial. We cannot afford to drop one or two along the way, uh, at least not at this point, because uh, <laughs> we don't have any wiggle room as of yet. So it, it's going to be uh, this is going to be an interesting season as it continues to play out. The New Orleans Saints are two and zero. Oh, they travel to Green Bay, who are one and one, coming off of a loss last week against those Atlanta Falcons by the score of twenty five to twenty four. The Packers offense are ranked 26th overall in the National Football League. They're 25th in the rush, 23rd in the pass, and they're second in scoring. The Saints offense is ranked 10th in, in the lead overall, which is a shock for me. I thought it would have been lower, but we're currently ranked 10th. We're 18th in rushing. We're 8th in passing, and we're 25th in scoring uh, the Packers defense is ranked 27th overall. They are 30th against the rush. They're 17th against the pass, and they're ranked 14th in scoring defense. The Saints defense, on the other hand, overall fourth. I know I said fifth earlier, but they are fourth overall in the National Football League. They are 14th against the rush seventh against the pass and they're tied for fifth in scoring defense uh turnover differential saints are a plus one and uh packers are a plus three moving over to team stats uh let's start with the new orleans saints the new orleans saints in total yardage 372 total yards uh that's 101.5 rushing and 270.5 in passing for the Packers. They have 286 total yards, 88 rushing and 198 passing yards allowed. The Saints, 277.5 broken down. That's 175.5 passing yards allowed and 102 rushing yards allowed for the Green Bay Packers their yards allowed is 393 broken down 
has 226.5 passing yards allowed and 166.5 rushing yards allowed. Players to watch, starting with the New Orleans Saints, our player to watch is our second-year wide receiver, Chris Olave. He has emerged as New Orleans' top receiver and has been its overall offensive playmaker during star running back Alvin Kamara's three-game suspension. He has 14 catches for 198 yards through these two games, plus a 40-plus yard reception in each of the two games. Uh, For the Green Bay Packers, their player to watch is quarterback Jordan Love. He leads the NFL in passer rating early in his first full season as a starter, but he's only completed 55.8% of his passes. His inexperience showed in Green Bay's last game against Atlanta when he went 0-6 in the fourth quarter as the Packers failed to get a first down and squandered a 24-12 lead. Uh, Now... He gets ready for his first regular regular season home start. The key matchups in this game. The key matchup for me is the Packers offensive line versus the New Orleans Saints defensive line. An injury to the left guard, Elgin Jenkins, for the Packers, and the uncertainty of left tackle, David Bakkeray. I'm pretty sure I butchered his name. His health status creates plenty of questions for the Packers as they face off against a potential Saints front. New Orleans Saints defensive end Carl Grandison has two and a half sacks through the first two games of this season, and Cameron Jordan is an eight-time Pro Bowl selection. And so this is this is going to be interesting to see. Now, I think the Saints did a pretty decent job up front Monday night, but I I was expecting better because just like the Packers, they had some injuries on their offensive line too that I was expecting the Saints to kind of take more advantage of, even though they did get pressure on uh, Bryce Young, but they really didn't get him to the ground much, you know, (laughs) as much as I, I would have expected, but you know, they did a decent job. I was still proud of my defense. Uh, this is another test as well. Uh, this offensive line is banged up, and the offensive line wasn't really that good before they were banged up. So <laughs> we should, this should be an advantage leaning heavily to the New Orleans Saints' favor. Um, key injuries, going over our injury report, starting with the New Orleans Saints, tight end Foster Monroe, ankle, He didn't practice on Wednesday. He was limited on Thursday, and on Friday, he didn't practice as well. He is listed as doubtful for Sunday's game. Uh, Running back, Jamal Williams, hamstring. We know that he injured that in the Monday night game. He didn't practice none this week. He has officially been ruled out for Sunday's game, which is no surprise. Uh, Quarterback, and I put that in quotations, Taysom Hill, knee. He was limited on Wednesday, but he was a full participant on Thursday and Friday. Uh, Kendrick Miller, uh, you know he's been dealing with a hamstring as well. He was a full participant all week and is expected to finally make his debut this week. And we need him. (laughs) We need him. Uh, We are we are a little hampered there in the backfield. So this this is great news uh, that he uh, he will be able to return for this game safety you go uh, Magdi his knee uh, he is listed as questionable he was limited all week safety Jordan Howden finger he didn't practice until Friday but he was a full participant now this is supposed to be the one that's going to replace Marcus May and he shows up on entry (laughs) but he was a full participant Uh, cornerback Paulson Adebo hamstring did not practice this week as well. He has been listed as questionable. For the Green Bay Packers, they have a laundry list of players that's on their injury report. Tackle David Bactara, 
I'm pretty sure I, I just destroyed his last name. My apologies, <laughs> but he, he is dealing with a uh, knee. Um, he didn't practice none this week. He has been listed as questionable guard and tackle. Elton Jenkins, knee as well. He didn't practice none this week. He has been designated out for Sunday's game. Running back Aaron Jones, hamstring. He was uh, he didn't practice on Wednesday, and he was limited the rest of the week. He has been listed as questionable linebacker. Uh, Rashad Gray, knee. He was limited all week. Uh, linebacker Louis Von Ness, elbow. He was limited all week. He has been listed as questionable. Wide right receiver Christian. Watson, hamstring, uh, he was limited on Wednesday, didn't practice on Thursday, limited on Friday. He has been listed as questionable. Uh, safety, Zane Anderson, hamstring, didn't practice none this week. He has been ruled out for Sunday's game. And cornerback, Jerry Alexander, back, didn't practice Wednesday and Thursday. He was limited on Friday. He is questionable for Sunday's game. This will be uh, a big early test for the Saints. Green Bay isn't a powerhouse as they were in the past, uh, but they are still a good team. Um, they're not, of course, Aaron Rodgers isn't there anymore, and it's not that threat. But even when Aaron Rodgers was there, Saints were pretty successful against the uh, Green Bay Packers. Let's not forget, a couple of years ago, the Saints... I mean, beat the brakes off of Green Bay, uh, where that um, this was after Hurricane Ida, and the game had to be played in Florida somewhere. I think at Jacksonville, and the Saints demolished them. I think thirty-eight to three, first game of the season, and uh, Jameis Winston was the quarterback. Then and and that, and that uh, Aaron Rodgers couldn't get anything going against this defense, and I think they kind of set the tone defensively for the rest of the season. Now, everything fell apart when Jameis Winston got hurt and, you know, and uh, Michael Thomas got hurt. It was just, uh, <laughs> it was bad. It, it was bad. Or did Michael Thomas, I don't think Michael Thomas was here. Well, he was here, but he wasn't here. <laughs> he was still hurt. But regardless, yeah, we did our thing. But, uh, yeah, this isn't the same team. And they are struggling. Uh, Jordan Love, he's trying to find his 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 footing in the NFL. And Jordan Love's a good quarterback. Jordan Love was one of those quarterbacks, you know, in that draft class. I was hoping that the Saints picked him up. Uh, but, you know, it didn't happen. <laughs> but, but I feel he's a good quarterback. He, and he is. He is. I mean, I, I told you earlier, he's leading the league in uh, passing percentage, you know, but it's only 55%. <laughs> and the Saints defense is is doing uh, game busters against the pass. Actually, overall defense. I mean, we're the fourth-ranked defense in the league. And so uh, uh, that's something to tip your hat on. And so this will be – I still feel it's going to be a tough game because you're going to Lambeau. Uh, historically, Derek Carr does not play good on the road. And to be quite honest, you know, he didn't have the best game Monday night. But I, I still stand by it wasn't all Derek Carr. I mean, it's hard to be <laughs> it's hard to be efficient when your offensive line is not protecting you. You know, your the clock in your head runs a little bit faster when you're getting popped every every other down, you know. So uh I don't blame him for a lot of that now the interception i do I, that was a dumb pass uh a couple of drives he could have played a little better but i'm not i'm not mad at it because we're fresh off of an andy dalton led saints offense <laughs> so this is still a vast improvement from last season so I, all these saints fans that i hear on the radio and on different podcasts, crying and moaning. Do you not remember what we have been dealing with since Drew Brees uh, rolled off into the sunset? This is an improvement. Now, I ain't saying Derek Carr is Drew Brees. Let's, let's pump the brakes there. I didn't say that. 
I'm just saying this is an improvement from what we saw two years ago. And I think it's going to get better. The, the team, it, it, takes a t- it takes time for chemistry to kick in. It, it really does. And I just look at Tom Brady when he went to Tampa. I know it's hard for us Saints fans to think of that, but, you know, <laughs> but just think when he first got to Tampa, those first six, seven games of that season, Tom Brady looked like hot garbage. But something clicked. And when they clicked, next thing you know, they're in the Super Bowl and they won it. You know? Nah, will that happen here? I don't know. I'm not saying we're going to make that historical run. I'm, I, I would love for it to happen. <laughs> but I'm not going out on a limb with that. But I, I do want them to be more productive. And I think they have the capability to be that. But the biggest flaw on this team and is most it's the most important cog in the wheel. I'm going to use that analogy again. Is this offensive line? Our offensive line has been so disappointing these first two weeks. You know, and as I keep preaching, I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how we can fix this. You know, as far as a quick fix, bringing somebody else in or, you know, picking somebody up off of the free agency wire or trading for somebody or something like that. Either way it go, you still got to give it time because that's a unit that needs to be really in tune with one another, and that takes time. You know, you bring somebody in, it's going to take time for them to get acclimated with this line. And so we're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place here. You know what I'm saying? So uh, they need to get better. <laughs> they need to do better. And never did I think I'll be screaming from a mountaintop, put in Andrews Pete. But this is where I'm at with it right now. Uh, I mean, Monday night, Trevor Penning wasn't even the worst one on the offensive line. It was everybody else. <laughs> you know, now when they were run blocking, they were they were game busters. Run blocking. That's why they need to run the ball more. And that is a perfect segue into our keys to victory. Keys to victory. Once again, no, you're not listening to last week's episode or the episode from two weeks ago. No, this is week three preview against the Green Bay Packers. And this is the same key to victory. Run the ball. Run the ball. I know we're hampered in that position. I know we lost Jamal Williams. I know that Kamara is out for one more week, but Kendrick Miller, I'm praying that he's 100%. Tony Jones Jr. had a a, a breakout game uh, last Monday night. Lean on those fellas. Your run the ball is going to open up so much in the passing game. It's not that complicated, Pete Carmichael. (laughs) It's not complicated. Run the ball even if you're getting one two yards maybe break a three yard run every now i stick with it stick with the run don't abandon it you may have to sacrifice a drive or two you know a three and out but you run the ball three straight times that's fine keep pounding that defensive line eventually it's going to open up eventually they're going to start crowding the box when they crowd the box, guess what? Somebody's open down the seam. Voila. Defensively, um, make Jordan Love beat you. <laughs> make Jordan Love beat you. Uh, Aaron Jones, their running back, he's a little hampered. He's probably still going to play. But Green Bay, uh, Matt LaFleur, their coach, he's not known for running the ball anyway. So that's never been a threat. And so I still would focus on it because they may throw you a curveball here because they want to protect their quarterback. And so they probably will try to run the ball, but contain the run, make Jordan Love beat you. Make him beat you. If Jordan Love go out there, throw for, I don't know, he's 24 for 30, uh, 320 yards and three touchdowns, and he beat us, Bravo. I'm not going to get mad at it. You know, I'm not going to get mad, but he's going to have to go and do it. (laughs) He's going to have to do it. But I have 
faith in my secondary, even without Marcus May, that that won't happen. And so we shall see. That's my keys to victory. Of course, um, this going into this season, I had this game as a question mark, but I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling confident. I may be riding the high of this 2-0 start. That is the first 2-0 start in 10 years here in New Orleans. Uh, but I'm picking the New Orleans Saints to come out victorious this Sunday against the Green Bay Packers by the score of 24 to 17. It's going to be a little tight. It's going to be a tough game. You know, uh, uh, Green Bay is still a well-coached team. I think it's going to be tough. Uh, may have to grind it out till the second half, but Ultimately, the New Orleans, New Orleans Saints will come out victorious. And I'm, I'm giving them that 17 because they're at home. But this Saints defense only allowed one touchdown all season thus far in two games. Uh, I'm not going to say in all season. Two, let's be real. Two games in that touchdown drive that they gave up. I don't know what Dennis Allen. I don't know why they went in the prevent defense in that Monday night game at the end. That was just dumb. <laughs> that was so dumb. But besides that, this defense has been shut down, lights out, excellent. And so uh, I'm giving them 17, but I don't. I doubt if they get that. I, <laughs> if they get half that, I'm gonna tip my hat once again. But I think the Saints will come out victorious and send us to three and no. But we shall see. I'm not Notre Dame, but <laughs> we shall see this Sunday on Fox, 12 noon. Saints versus Packers. Oh, man, this is going to be a good game, people. This is going to be a good game. Don't miss it. I would like to know what do you think the outcome will be? Do you think this is this will be the Saints' first defeat of the season? Do you think the Saints' offense will finally wake up and start clicking this week? I, I, hey, it's possible. Um, I don't think – I still don't think it's going to happen this week. I, I'm still – uh you know, hanging my hat on when Kamara returns. And even when he returns next week, it's still going to take maybe a week or two, and then the offense will just click. I, that's my that's my prayer, at least. <laughs> it, it will. But as long as we can survive until then and squeak out some victories, I'm all for it. But I want to know what you think. Email the show, kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. Look me up on all social media platforms. Just look up the KB Radio network also youtube look for the kb radio network channel subscribe and like this video if you don't mind don't forget about the five stars the reviews and sharing this show if you're listening on apple Podcasts, spotify iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the dome patrol here on the kb radio network everyone thank you for joining me for this preview of the week Three matchup between our New Orleans Saints and their Green Bay Packers. Can't wait to speak to you after the game as we recap the Saints victory. Until then, I'm going to be screaming, who that? <laughs>